So in this episode, we're going to be creating a flash message that we can inject into our signup page, the new EJS file, and handle any validation errors that happen as a result of the signup process. So what happens when our user goes in and instead of putting in all the correct information, just hits create account? Well, we're going to get this error and this is not the most intuitive and pretty thing to show our user. So how can we do better? Let's go back into the code and I'm going to change our error handling methodology here. So now when we get an error, we're going to log that to the console and then we're going to redirect the browser back to new.ejs. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to restart the server. Let's go back to the error page. And now when I hit create account, this page, new.ejs, is going to be reloaded because there was an error. And if we go into the console, we can actually see what that error looks like. Okay, that's better. But really what I want to do is give an indication of what is wrong with this page so that the user can uh, correct the signup form. Let's go back into the code. And I'm going to alter our methodology a little bit further. So I've created this rec.session.flash variable here, but what does that come from? I'm going to take a more extensive dive into what sessions are in other screencasts that deal with authentication. But for the purpose of this episode, rec.session is a place where we can store variables, and those variables will be available to us as long as the user has that browser tab open, that they haven't closed the browser window. However, now that we have this variable, we need to make it accessible to our views because rec.session.flash is not available to our views. So instead, we're going to use res.locals.flash. So res.locals.flash is available from our views and we'll make that in what you would think would be equal to request.session.flash. However, if we did it this way, this is just passing a reference, a pointer to this flash variable. So if rec.session.flash changed, so would our locals.flash, and we want our own copy of locals.flash. It's really easy to remedy this. We'll just use the underscore library and this clone method, and that'll copy rec.session.flash so that we have our own copy in locals.flash. However, this presents a different problem. When we go to redirect back to new.ejs, res.locals only lasts until the next request. And since when we do this redirect, we're actually going to request res.view, which would be new.ejs, we've got to actually place this before res.view. So after we've rendered this view, we don't want the flask message to come up again on this page unless there's been another error. So I can assign rec.session.flash to an empty object. And actually, we need to do that again down here on success so that if there is a success, it'll reset rec.session.flash to an empty object. The final thing we need to do is take our locals.flash variable and place it in our new.ejs file so that we can inject that flash message or those flash messages of the errors into our page. And here's how we do that. So if both the flash object and flash error exist, then loop through that object, that error object, injecting each error as a list item. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm going to restart the server and refresh the page. 
So now when I try to create an account, all of our validation errors are updated. If I refresh the page, the flash is cleared out. So that works great for the individual controller, but what if we wanted to apply this to all controllers? Well, we can do that through a policy. And in the next screencast, I'm gonna go over how to create that policy as well as how to do some client-side validation. Thanks for watching.